Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your boy Jerome and I'm coming to you today with a review for Black and Crew Chicago Season 4 Episode 7 titled White Tacticals. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright y'all, so this episode started out with um, day one of Charmaine's reign and you know, if these people really were smart, they would know that with Charmaine owning that LLC, that means that she literally just owns the name of the company. It doesn't mean that she's the boss or anything like y'all giving her way too much power and it's going to her head. And for her to sit there and tell them, you know, it's going to be a nine to five. It's going, they're going to get paid by weekly. They still have to pay their booth rent and they have to give her 50% of their earnings. Completely idiotic if you want me to be honest with you. First of all, Charmaine, who is going to take you seriously? Like, really? So what you left that corporate job? I heard that she got fired from the corporate job, but that's not my business. But for her to sit there and tell them what they're going to do, like, I would have I been like, Lily, I'm not giving you shit. Like, you ain't work for this. Like, you're not the one that's sitting here tattooing these people. So if you think that I'm going to give you 50% of my money and you ain't sitting here doing nothing, like, get the hell out of here with that. Like, I won't even, I'll pay you for your booth rent. That's all it, that's all you're going to get. And you're not going to sit here and tell me that I'm going to get paid bi-weekly when I'm the one that's sitting here doing a job, tattooing these people. I'm going to get my money up front and that's going to be that. And then she's talking about how she wanted them to have a debit card. And I'm like, oh my God, really? I mean, I know some tattoo shops do do debit cards, but most of them, you're going there with the cash and you're paying with cash. But for her to sit here and try to make all this stuff like a corporate business, like, first of all, tattoo, you can't be no corporate. It, it's not corporate. Like... Tattoo shops have their certain times that they open and they certain times that they closed, you know So for her to sit here and say nine to five like who? Most people work a nine to five Charmaine So how are you gonna make money with a, ta with a tattoo shop that is a nine to five? Most people come after they get off of work to get a tattoo and stuff like that. So Miss me with that one and I was here when um four said, you know Maybe Lily should black her other eye which she really should. I don't agree with Lily fighting Charmaine and all, but in this instance, Charmaine is asking for whatever she gets. Like, she letting a little bit of, quote, power go to her head, and whatever happens to her happens to her. And, you know, since uh, Lily and Reese are not in agreement with what Charmaine is doing, you know, they decide that they're going to go on the strike. And, you know, you got big uh, puffball, uh, jigglypuff in there, knocking shit over i'm like oh my god man i get it you pissed off but you ain't gotta knock shit over like that's it ain't helping nothing you knocking stuff over is not helping nothing just like i don't think lily and um recent strike is really gonna help anything with an ignorant person like charmaine it just ain't gonna do shit that's how i feel about that like i i get the strike a for effort but it's gonna fall deaf on charmaine's ears completely charmaine is so stuck on herself right now she thinks she the boss that shit isn't going nowhere fast. All right, so next we get uh, Junior and Ryan. They pulling up at uh, the new 9 mag. When they get out the car, they see that um, the windows have been tagged. And, you know, Junior goes into his trunk and pulls out some Windex and they think that you scrub to get stuff off of stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, hmm, Junior, did you do that? Like, because it's, it's too convenient that you got this stuff in the back seat of your, in the trunk of your car, but that's neither here nor there. So while they out there cleaning up the window and all that kind of stuff, Bella walks up and you know, since Bella is an employee there, they have Bella clean that window. And then you know, uh, they talking about uh, Ryan and um, what's her name? Rachel. And you know, they talking about their relationship and all that kind of stuff. And Ryan says that he and Rachel have been together off and on for 15 years. And I'm like, damn, that's the longest time to be with somebody. Like, damn, 15 years? And you know, Bella at, well, um, not Bella, but uh, Junior was talking about, you know, Ryan and um, Rachel getting married. And, you know, Bella asked, well, why come, why come y'all haven't gotten married yet? And then, you know, Ryan's talking about all this stuff, you know, it's just been a lot of stuff going on between them. I'm like, you think you cheating on her and then her having a baby with somebody else? Like, yeah, it's been a lot of shit between you and Rachel over the years, but maybe they'll walk down the aisle at some point. Who cares? Cause I don't. Really and truly, to be honest, which I don't care about Ryan or I mean I like Ryan, but Rachel, whatever with Rachel, I'm whatever. And you know, Bella asks, "Can she be a bridesmaid?" I'm like, "Girl, how are you gonna sit here and ask? Can you be a bridesmaid? She don't know you, and then the first time that she did meet you, you came in there sloppy ass drunk. Like, 
Hell no, nah, bitch, you ain't finna be in my wedding. Like, no, 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 no. There's alcohol in there, and you probably gonna can make a complete fool out of yourself in my wedding. So I will say, denied. 100%. All right, next we get Jigglypuff, a.k.a. Van. You know, he got a call from his brother saying that um, he saw Jen walking out of a club with some dude. And automatically, Van thinks that Jen is cheating on him. I'm like, how stupid can you be? Okay, Jen walks out of a club with a dude. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's cheating on you, number one. Number two, that could be a friend of hers. Number three, number two, number one, that could be a friend of hers. Number two, it could be just some random dude that walked out the club with her. Number three, it could be um, a family member. You know, it could be a, it could be a, a combination of reasons that the dude was walking out of the club with her. Hell, she could have been drunk and the dude was just like, hey, I want to help you outside of the club or whatever. Like, for you to just automatically assume that she cheating on you, like... That says a lot about you, Van, and how you feel about your relationship with Jen. So, you know, he on the phone and he cussing Jen out and calling her all kind of bitches and stuff and like that. And then he pulls up on it. And I'm like, really, Van? Like, you doing all of this and you weren't even there. Like, I could see it if you was at the club, if you was at the club, outside the club or anywhere near the club. And you saw her walking out with the dude, hand in hand, kissing him, hugging him, doing whatever. That would warrant, I would be like, okay, I get it. But you didn't see this. Your brother supposedly saw this. And he come back and tell you, like, for you to go off on this girl, it's get this. First of all, looking at that whole interaction with him, him getting all buffed, you know, bucked up and puffed up. And I'm like, oh shit, I feel so bad for Jen. Cause I'm like, thank God the cameras were there. Come like, if the cameras weren't there, I feel like he would have probably hit her ass. That's just me being honest with you. I feel like Ben probably would have put hands on her. And then when he get there, you know, they arguing back and forth with each other. And I'm like, do y'all even know? I mean, yeah, she's saying that she didn't, you know, it wasn't nothing. And then he's still, you know, just yelling at her. And I'm like, come on. Like, the girl is telling you nothing happened. Take her word for it. Like I said, you were not there. So you don't know the whole logistics of what happened. So whatever. Like, I was really confused with that whole thing. He cussing her out. You weren't there. And she's telling you nothing happened. Like, take your girl's word and just move on with it. And if later on down the road you find out that something did happen, then cool. Go off on it. Whatever. But for now, take her word for it. Over. I mean, I get it. It's your brother. But that's your woman. You're supposed to trust her and all that kind of stuff. But that's how I feel about that. All right. And then next you get Ryan. It's Mother's Day. So they're all at the house. Um, and they're having a, a barbecue. And, you know, Rachel's mom and dad are there. Rachel's dad says a prayer and everything. And then, you know, uh, Ryan and Rachel's dad go and sit down. And they have a talk about, you know, Ryan having a, a little bit of a surprise for Rachel. And, um, you know, me listening to this, I'm like, why does it sound like Ryan wants to propose to Rachel? But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, but I don't think Ryan's going to actually propose to Rachel. I think it's going to be something different. And, you know, he just talking to her daddy, talking about, you know, he has a surprise for her. I don't know who that was that was sitting beside them talking about, you know, when is the ring coming and all that kind of stuff. But I guess Ryan kind of ignored that situation, just kept talking to her daddy. And then eventually Ryan and Rachel walk outside. They have a little bit of a conversation with each other. Be honest with you, I really wasn't paying 100% of attention to that conversation between Ryan and Rachel. I know he was talking about their relationship and how long they've been together and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the surprise was not a ring for Rachel, which I kind of figured it wasn't a ring. He actually got her a brand new card, a card that she had wanted to been one for a while. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, it was it was a cute car. And I guess Rachel was happy. If Rachel's happy with it, I'm happy with it. And we can move on from there. All right, so I'm guessing all this stuff might have been filmed around the time of Mother's Day. Because you get Don, he's on Daddy Duties with Don Jr. And, you know, he's trying to put him to sleep and all that kind of stuff. But I think Don Jr. was trying to get something sweet to eat before going to bed. And, you know, Don is just telling him no. But he eventually, uh, he FaceTimes Ashley so that Don Jr. can see his mom. And you can clearly tell that Don Jr. misses his mama a whole lot. And, you know, they talk. And, you know, listening to Ben in his interviews, he's talking about his family and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, wow, now you realize what you, what you did. You should have realized this before you pulled your dick out on Instagram and had the girl suck your dick. Like, all this could have been avoided if you had never did what you did. 
because what Ashley did was in retaliation to what you did. So hindsight is and basically hindsight is twenty twenty. You see what you stand to lose, your family. But now and now you want to be all apologetic and you know oh you was wrong for this and this and that. Like you should have been thinking about this the moment that you was on Instagram. Number one on Instagram. That's the first thing. You shouldn't have been on Instagram doing this, doing what you did. I don't want to say it would be okay if you um, had. It's not okay. Put it this way. It ain't okay either way it go. If he, you know, did it on Instagram or didn't do it on Instagram. But if you didn't do it on Instagram, Ashley would have. She probably wouldn't have found out. But she wouldn't have found out the way that she found out. And she probably it probably would have been a while before she found out. But you know, like I said. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and now you know he wants to do everything he can to get his family back. I don't know how I feel about that. I I feel like Ashley, if she goes back to Van, I think she needs some serious help. No offense to Ashley, but she needs some help. Like he gonna compete. He if you go back to him, that nigga's gonna continue to cheat on you for real. Like once a cheater, always a cheater. In my per- in my opinion, that's just how I feel. All right, and then we get this thing with Charmaine. Her mom is coming up from um, New Orleans. You know, her mama asking her, well, why can you didn't pick me up from the airport? And then Charmaine is talking about, you know, well, all the stuff that she got going on at the shop and everything, you know, it's just a lot for her right now. And my thing with Charmaine is, yeah, it might be a lot for you right now, but you brought it on yourself by buying that LLC and then trying to run these people and make them do what you want them to do. Like... I thought the whole premise for y'all getting um, Loyal Inc. was so that y'all could be y'all own boss and y'all can do what, you know, y'all can run things the way that y'all want to run it. And if I'm not mistaken, it is the same thing. Isn't this the same thing that y'all were complaining about with Ryan? Like that Ryan was bossy and all that kind of stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, Ryan was y'all's boss, but that's neither here nor there. But Charmaine, you basically brought this onto yourself by doing all the stuff that you've done. And even your mama had to sit down and tell you, you know, one, she said that's not how she raised you to be bossy and all that kind of stuff. And then number two, she had to school you on, you're not the talent. They are the talent. Like, they are the ones that do the tattooing. You don't do nothing in the shop. You're not bringing any value to the shop. So you can't sit there and tell these people who have the experience and, you know, and all that kind of stuff that they have to do what you say when you don't do anything contributory to the shop. So I was 100% on Charmaine's mama's side. Like, I'm like, go mama, tell her she wrong. Like, put her in her place. Like, for real. Because you're wrong. Like, seriously, Charmaine. Like, you cannot sit here and tell these people they're going to work a nine to five, take a paycheck every two weeks, and then give you 50% of their money, and their customers have to use debit cards. Like, fuck out of here with that. If I was any of them, I would have said, you know what, Charmaine? Since you got this LLC, and you want to do all that stuff, how about you... Find yourself some more tattoo artists because I'm going to dip the hell out because I ain't got time for this shit. And that's just how I would have put it to Charmaine. Because if you feel like you can do if you feel like you can do so much, do it by yourself and don't call me when you fall flat on your face. And that's just how I would have put it to her. Like, I'm not about to give you 50 percent of my money. My customers are not using debit cards unless I want them to. And I'm not working a damn nine to five or taking a check every two weeks like fucking you mean like bye Charmaine bye all right so then you get the scene with uh Jim she's in a car with Nikki and you know she's basically telling Nikki about all the stuff that happened between her and Van thinking that he she cheating on him and all that kind of stuff and you know since she said since Van pulled up on her she gonna pull up on him and I'm like oh my god like how how dumb can y'all be like seriously like okay he pulled up on you so now you're gonna pay the repay the favor and pull up on him all right I see you but she did it in a completely different way than what Van did. This crazy nutcase decided that she want to go through the window. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Jen, you look at you in a black neighborhood because look at all the stuff that's happening today with the white people calling black people, calling the police on black people for doing, you know, normal stuff, selling paper, throwing papers, selling um, water and all this kind of stuff and barbecuing like you are lucky that you are in a black neighborhood because if you was in a white neighborhood, they would have called the cops on your black ass so fast you would you wouldn't have been able to say I'm sorry. But like I said, Nikki goes through the window. Jen, not Nikki. Jen goes through the window. Nikki says, "Fuck that. Uh, come up on the front door for me, girl, and I come in that way." So she does open the front door for her, and you know she goes through uh, Van's shoes and his clothes, and she takes that shit with her. 
and she uh rice on the um countertop and ketchup i really didn't see what that uh said on the, on, the, on the countertop so if anybody did see what it said you can tell me in the comment section below and we'll discuss everything that's going on with the show so like i said she's taking this stuff and once she finishes doing that she leaves and you know on the other end you got van van is actually thinking about what happened the last time that he saw nick um jim and he's just kind of getting this you know kind of thinking of himself like man i was wrong and he tries to call jim and basically wants to apologize because he was wrong like i said earlier van was wrong for his delivery and all that kind of stuff it's always a way of doing stuff if you feel like your girl is cheating on you then all you gotta do is be like hey baby we gotta talk you know my brother said he saw you at the club with some dude who was a dude and give her the chance to say well he probably did see me at the club with some dude and this dude was x you know it was xyz dude you know i knew this dude from this and this and that or it was my cousin or whatever give her the opportunity to say what happened instead of just blowing up on her and telling her you know that she cheated on you and all that kind of stuff without even having factual proof so he um comes to the house and he sees what he did what she did but like i said they were both wrong in this situation nikki was wrong for, not, not nikki jen was wrong for going through the she was completely wrong for going through that window she could have i'm pretty sure she got a key to the, the house like use your key girl maybe she don't have a key but how why would you go through the window of all things why would you first of all why would you go through the window secondly why how is that window open is my next question like that that was what i thought about next was how was the how and why was that window open but we're gonna leave that alone and i'm not gonna even touch on that any further but they were both wrong and maybe they'll sit down at some point to discuss this shit because van blew up for no reason and what nikki not nikki why do i keep wanting to say nikki what jen did was kind of wrong so two wrongs do not make it right in, and especially in this situation all right next you get ryan and rachel they in her car ryan is trying to um drink a shake or eat something and you know uh rachel telling him don't eat in her car and whatever with that so they are actually supposed to be going on a date uh for a picnic at the beach but once they get to the beach they decide that they're not going to do the picnic and all that kind of stuff and they just actually sit in the car and have a conversation with each other and basically ryan is talking about you know those who possibly get married to each other at some point and you know he's talking about he wants her family there for the engagement but rachel's like she really don't want anybody there for her engagement and you know when it comes down to a wedding she doesn't want a big wedding she wants to have you know basically she wants him her and the kids to go to the courthouse and get married and it just be between them be between them which i can respect that like i like people who are not so flashy and i mean i like weddings no no offense to people I like I like weddings if you can afford it cool if you can't do what you can do and that's either go to the courthouse and just be YouTube so I you know I like it's both sides for me I like I, I do love weddings but I'm also here for people who go to the courthouse like my best friend when she got married she was planning a big wedding but she ended up her and her husband going to the courthouse that get married and you know eventually they'll have a big wedding and I'll be a part of it God I don't really like buying shit and she knows that but for her i'm gonna do it so i was here for nikki i mean i was here for rachel saying she doesn't want a big flashy wedding and you know when it comes to the big flashy weddings that's not everything like that's just one day out of the that's just one day and after that uh wedding is over that's when the marriage begins and you know marriage is from what i hear i don't know anything about marriage because i'm not married but marriage is a big commitment and it's a lifetime thing so you know just that just having the, the glitz and glamour of the wedding that's not everything and i hate when people try to make you know the, the wedding you know every just over the top and spectacular it's a beautiful day but you know you can do it and you can do it with a small budget and still make it you know be everything because like i said and i actually know people who've had big extravagant weddings and end up being a divorce five to ten five or six years later so as, so like I said, kudos to I mean, kudos to her for wanting to have you know it just be her and Ryan whenever they do get married. All right, and then we get to the loyal ink strike. So Charmaine and Danielle they pull up to the shop, and you got Nikki and Re not Nikki, you got Lily and Reese outside um, protesting, which it was a weird protest. 
and they had that big blow up witch doll that was supposed to be a uh, Charmaine. And if I'm not mistaken, did that sign say suck my dick on it? Like I died laughing when I saw that. I said, suck my dick. Really? So, you know, um, Charmaine is in her feelings about that whole shit. She gonna went inside and talk to, uh, you know, foreign Don them. And she's talking about she gonna call the police on it. And I'm like, Charmaine, you proven yourself to be stupid as shit. Like, you do realize that that is a constitutional right that they can sit out there and protest peacefully. Like, what are you calling the police for? Like, they're not going to do anything. They are within their constitutional rights to a peaceful protest. So, you know, while um, they are out there protesting, you get a uh, Cobra. She's back from Houston. And, you know, she sees them out there protesting. And she asks them what's going on. And, you know, Lily tells her, basically, Charmaine is uh, taken over. Charmaine wants us to work a nine to five. She wants us to, um, you know, give her fifty percent, and we getting paid bi-weekly. And you know, Cobra's like, she ain't feeling that. So she go inside and she talks to uh, Charmaine and try to figure out what's going on with that. You know, like, what's up with you know this nine to five, this bi-weekly stuff, and this fifty percent. She's like, I'm not feeling that. And then you know, Charmaine once again gets in her feelings. I'm like. But this is stuff that you said, so how are you getting your feelings? Like, I don't get it. Like, you put this out there, so how are you going to get mad at Lily and all this kind of stuff? And then, you know, they go. she go outside where Lily and um, Reese are, and she pokes a hole in the blow-up witch. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, are you serious? So you're going to get them their money back for the deposit that I'm pretty sure they had to put down for that witch? Like... You know, and then they start wrestling because they weren't fighting. They were wrestling with each other. And, you know, surprise, surprise, Don was the voice of reason, had to yell at them and tell them, hey, you know, we out here making a fool out of ourselves. These people looking at us like we crazy and all this kind of stuff, which they I'm pretty sure those people are used to y'all doing the shit that y'all do, which it ain't no different. But I was here for Don, like, break that shit up. Like, Charmaine, you wrong. And Lily, you, you know, y'all both are wrong for every, you know, y'all both are wrong all the way around. Lily was wrong for putting her hands on Charmaine, and Charmaine was wrong for all the shit that she's doing with the shop. So, that was Black Ink Crew. Sorry if this video was all over the place. Leave your comments, like the video, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys later. Peace.